Good evening and welcome. I've had some folks ask me to demonstrate how I play arpeggios, to give you some tips about that, and specifically relating to a video I did called Hollywood Style Piano, and I played the song Night and Day by Cole Porter. And so it's in the key of E flat. I started out with a B major 7 to a B flat 7 to an E flat major 7. And that's where I put the arpeggio. So you're generally going to put the arpeggio where the note is being held. So that's the held note. This is the moving note. That's the held note. Now, so I put the arpeggio in there. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking these three fingers. It could also be the thumb the index and the fourth thing, or whatever is most comfortable for you. And I'm playing starting on the third of the chord rather than the root. I'm not playing like one, three, five. I'm playing three, five, major seven. And that would be a three note arpeggio like this. So what I'm doing is I'm playing them individually like that, arpeggiating the notes, and then shifting the position of the hand. It's not anything where I'm bending. I'm just quickly. So what you have to do is see that note the target note there and see the visualize the thumb hitting it like the like that's the first thing you need to accomplish. And you start out very slow of course like like that. Now you just lock into that position then get there and this the next two notes come very easily. Like that. That's the ascending. Descending the same way. So now on this descending one, I have to get, I have to jump over and get the third finger on there. Now you might want to use the fourth finger if you like it better. But you're really, I'm really locking into that position. I'm feeling that position, and I'm actually seeing the arpeggio ahead of time. I see where it is up here. See the whole thing. I can go one more octave. See, so like I was just doing ascending arpeggios rather than descending, but descending would be using the same fingering, of course. Now, if you want to play a four note arpeggio, I would start three, five, seven, nine. So I would add the upper extension like this. Now, on the ascending motion, I would use thumb, index, third, or middle finger, ring finger, or fourth finger, like that. I wouldn't use the pinky, although you could use the fifth finger if it's better for you. I use the fourth ascending. Like that. Now descending, it's a little difficult for me to do that. So I'm I'm gonna use the fifth finger like descending. I'm just jumping like that. That's the jump. Might have to work on that. The fourth finger is easier for you, you should use the fourth. So I go. as good with that as I am with the three notes. But that's essentially the first one you want to practice. Now you can play it like that, or you can play it as you could do vary it, the exercise, and make it a, a diminished chord, or a seventh. If you wanted a, a seventh chord to be a dominant seventh, it would be like that. Minor seventh would be See how that works, and then diminish would be that's four notes now. Yeah, or if it's three notes, it'd be this. So you want to start out very slowly, like but it's fun to kind of go through the different types of chords, like major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, maybe minor seven flat five, like this. See, now I'm playing upper extension, so that's really, that's really, looks like a minor 7 flat 5 here, but it's really an upper extension of an E flat 9 chord. So, but it forms a minor 7 flat 5 from this position. So I'm using the fifth finger there. Now diminished. See, so, like that. I'm better at ascending here, but... better with the fifth finger because I have actually a bent finger here so it helps I have a tr problem stretching in my right hand but my left hand I can reach a tenth easily 
Now that's a good way to start. Now you can play them on any chord you want. Like you start, you can start with C if that's easier for you. Start on the third. Right? That's the major dominant would be. Minor seven would be this one. Half diminished. Full diminished. I'll start on the C on this one. This one's easier to play actually with four notes like this. Sorry. You work it up so you eventually lock into that position, you can do it pretty quickly. So I can do it. So I'm used to playing these. Now that's. Those are the first two, starting with just the right hand. You can support it in the left hand with the chord and then play the arpeggio. So you want to try going through the major sevenths, the dominant sevenths, the minor sevenths, the minor seven flat five, and the diminished. And then you can play the upper extension. So the dominant, the major nines, the dominant nines, and so on. Minor nines would be like that. Well, I'm starting with C. Like that. That one I have to, I have to go. Actually, I play whatever arpeggio is easiest for me, so I don't play any difficult ones. You know, I mean, probably should practice them more, but I always try to play ones that are that are easy for me. You'll find that out as you try to practice more of them. You'll find out which ones are easy for you, and you'll get better at those if you practice them regularly. But you can, you can practice them with a metronome too, which is a good way to. Practice them through a beat, and like I'll demonstrate that now. Here's a challenging little exercise to try. How do I know it's challenging? Because I tried to do it myself and I screwed it up. So here we go. Now we're going to do major seven, right? Dominant seven, minor seven, half diminished, and then full diminished. To the count here, this is set on 84 right now. You can start slower or, or faster, whatever you can do. Three, four, major seven. up that's the challenge but that's a fun thing to try to do so now there you have the concept on the right hand arpeggio using either three notes or four notes and then putting it to a metronome and um, like I say you have to be sure that you're doing an upper extension of the chord I mean it can get pretty exotic I mean if you're playing say a C7 sharp 11 like exotic jazz chords now you can just use the upper extension so here's a C7 with a 9 a sharp 11 and 13 I can play just the arpeggio on the upper extensions like this a lot of times they just do it ascending and end somewhere like that like that so now I want to show you a little bit about the two-handed arpeggios and first a very simple one. Let's take the same chord, that E flat major. And now I'm going to do this. I'm going to just, instead of playing the chord like that, I'm going to arpeggiate it in the right hand like this. So I'm going to put the bass note in the left hand. You can't see it, but I want to be close enough here. But I'm playing the E flat down there. Then I'm arpeggiating this. Or it's like a broken chord, like that. And then what I do is I duplicate it in the left hand like this. Like that go up to the next octave like this. And that sounds really good. It's pretty easy to do. I only do the easy things, right? 
You have to practice it slowly, of course, but... So you can do that uh, with a metronome if you like. The other thing is to overlap them like this. Then overlap. You come over and do this one. So that sounds really good too. I can start lower. Now if I do it quickly, it goes... See? So I can combine those. And I can do overlapping and then I can duplicate. Like I can do... This is overlapping. And then I might go there. Like, there's lots of combinations you can use, but the main thing, like, like that, or, or, in other words, you find your own tricks, things that work for you, but these, I hope these tips give you some ideas of things you can do. Please ask me a question. I'll slow this down. I'll do another video on this, but this was just a quickie to give you a couple of tips. And if you got something out of, out of it, I really would appreciate hearing from you. So thanks so much and uh, keep watching. We'll see you next time.